That poem destroys me. I love that poem so much. Um, I just want to say thank you for all being in the room together on a day like this, on a night like this. It's a huge comfort to be with Max's dear ones. And I feel like Max's love for people had a kind of associative quality in, math in mathematical terms where people who Max loved, I deeply love and have come to love. So it's a privilege to, um, to meet some of you for the first time. Max began as my student. He then became my friend. As I watched him furiously write his first book of poetry, he became my colleague. As I watched him face death, he became my teacher. Max had a wild gift of eloquence. He married this gift with his singular gift for listening. That Max could marry eloquence with listening made him wise. When he was 20, he wrote this about his desire to listen. Give me some language and give me some listeners. Let them do monstrous things they don't intend to do to make them happy and unhappy. We're all just figuring out how to listen. It seems like right now, today, it seems like only some of us are figuring out how to listen. I wish all of us were figuring out how to listen. Recently, I had a dream of Max. I asked him if it was hard to be dead. He said, yes, it's hard to be dead. It's hard not to talk, but I am listening all the time. It comforted me to think of Max listening to us all the time. All of us who miss Max have the gift of his genius, of his writing forever. But we don't have his quicksilver, bold, loving in the moment. Someone said robust exuberance, joking, speaking presence. But might we have his listening if we look for it? And in so having his listening experience again when we need it, his wide, wide love. In a poem called Refuge, Max wrote, to imagine a heaven is to admit there are things in this world you think you could never bring yourself to love even given an unlimited number of attempts. Learn to love everything, the world becomes heaven. That sounds hard, I have a better idea, pass the soap. <laughs> In inimitable, Ritvoian fashion, and yes, I think he's earned his own adjective, he gives us beautiful and instructive advice, learn to love everything, the world becomes heaven, and then humor, pass the soap. There was nothing in this world that Max saw as unfit for poetry, which is another way of saying, there was nothing in this world that Max saw as unworthy to be contemplated as a potentially holy object. When I interviewed Max this summer about his book, his beautiful book, Four Reincarnations, and asked him about the relationship between spirituality and poetry, he said, all my spirituality asks of me is that I put myself in situations that feel holy that take my breath away and make me go, I can't believe something as beautiful as this is happening to me. My family is holy, so I write them poems. I can't think of anything right now I could immediately disqualify as the spiritual centerpiece of a poem. He went on to say, I don't think the spiritual world needs to be claimed or reclaimed by anyone or anything. Let religion lay hands upon it. Let secularity lay hands upon it but let the hands be gently laid. Let anything that clasps offer the kind of prayer it wants to pray. Let this all be poetry. And again, what a gift it is to be in a room tonight where poetry matters in the way that it mattered to Max and matters to Max. And I want to close with one of his poems. It's called Hi, Melissa. I have spoken to you of heaven I simply meant the eyes are suns that see. Seeing is the face's nervous, delicious Lord. Listening to you makes me naked. When I kiss your ankle, I am silencing an oracle. The oracle speaks from the hill of your ankle. Max, we thank you for your boundless love.